to the sea in slips. This stunt wouldn't be so easy to do in an old-fashioned bathing suit. But then, bathing suits didn't used to be what they are today. Or rather, they didn't used to be what they are not today. Well, goodbye, girls. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Not counting the driver. Out in Hollywood, the pretty girls that dress the background for the dancing stars of the big musicals have found a top hat way to go into the water. There's nothing like a solid steel springboard for safety. Give these girls a pool, a few square inches of bathing suit, and a car with a hard top, and the little matter of diving becomes very simple. Of course, there's the problem of offering the least resistance to the water, but all these models are beautifully streamlined. And that always makes diving much easier to watch. In 1913, Hiram Doner, a carpenter of Quentin, Pennsylvania, bought himself an automobile to use in his business. And for 23 years, Hiram has been using his car in and around Quentin. Hiram is proud of his old car and proud, too, of the record he has made with it. 250,000 miles and he has never had an accident. Over this period of 23 years, he has spent a total of $270 for license plates, $45 for repainting, and guess how much for repairs? Just $25. The car isn't exactly streamlined, but then the driver is always air-cooled in summer and in winter. As a reward for the years of service and the record for safety which Hiram has made, they are presenting him with a new 1936 modern automobile. Mr. Miss Donor, I want to congratulate you on the marvelous record you made. With thank you. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to present you with the keys for your new 1936 Chevrolet. And I thank I you hope, ever so much. I hope you enjoy it. You yeah. too, Mrs. Donor. It's really real. Thank you. I think the new car is lovely. Isn't that enough now? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Time has been very kind to Mr. and Mrs. Donor, and the new car should help them to be just as happy as two kids, and just as spry. At Flint, Michigan, a crowd of 35,000 enthusiastic fight fans gather to watch the General Motors Amateur Boxing Tournament in the Atwood Stadium. And the referee is the most famous of them all, that idol of boys and men, Jack Dempsey. As a preliminary, two flea weights prepare to mix it up. And under the eyes of the Manasseh Mauler, they do all they can to achieve a knockout. But Jack tells the boys to stop stalling around. And just to show him what they can do, they make the fur fly. In one of the main bouts, two automobile companies are represented by two handy-fisted employees. as though he could take it, and boy, can he pass it up. In this gentle game of give and take, if the eye isn't quick, the ear becomes cauliflower.
Inspecting turret tops as they come off the assembly line is a made-to-order job for James Scott, a regular cloud biter who looks low to see how things are on the top. It isn't hard for him to look over a hard top. Starting with these violin cases, size 17, and measuring carefully, we find that Jim is just exactly seven feet three inches tall, although he's only 22 years old. He's inclined to look down on people, but then, what can you expect from that altitude? The Ozark Mountains in Missouri, the land of good old mountain music. And if you know the roads, a mighty fine place to fish. Mr. Ray Bergman, an editor of the Outdoor Life magazine, has a weakness for fishing, and he knows just where to go to find the ones which bite. It's only two hops, four skips, and a flock of jumps away from town, over a super highway, which leads straight, well, almost straight, to the river. The fish wait patiently for Mr. Bergman, and sometimes Mr. Bergman waits patiently for the fish, but it isn't all waiting. However, up in northern Michigan, they don't always leave their cars on the shore. Say, what kind of a boat do you think you're launching? The smelter running. Every spring in the little streams off the Great Lakes, thousands of these fish get the urge to go places and do things. What they do, nobody cares. But where they go is very important to this man. All smelt who are interested in a ride have been invited to climb into the back seat if fish can climb. There's plenty of room for all who care to enjoy the comforts of the modern motor car. No hooks, no line, no bait, no waiting. Just close the door, and with any luck at all, you have a load of passengers. It's not very scientific from the Isaac Walton point of view, but then, the man who fishes for smelt doesn't measure his success by the number of fish he gets, but by the pound. There's no law to limit the catch, and the fisherman may have just as many as he can carry away. Let's see how many of the little fellows were motor-minded. This watertight body brings them back alive. And that is the end of the fish story, and also the end of those fish. Canine Society is all a gog and a twitter this afternoon, as Major Kerr of the Doggy Kerrs entertains at tea. Dressed in a bully brown and white coat, the Major welcomes his many guests with a charming smile. Several of the guests arrive on four legs, while others motor down from their nearby estates. Guards have been placed at all exits to watch for the dog catcher, and the party progresses quickly, but not quietly. Mrs. Spitz, Herbert Rover, and Alan Spaniel of the Newport Spaniels are all very impatient for something to eat. Also, this member of the younger set. One of the best behaved guests at the party is this youthful policeman, but now he's getting hungry. In fact, they all are. And something's going to happen if, ah, uh, ah, uh, it does. Hey, you mutts. Ain't you's got no manners? <laughs> 